When the Victorian leader of the Greens departed politics, a Senate seat was made available which was subsequently filled by a woman of Aboriginal heritage named Lydia Thorpe. She is an activist who made her entrance into the Senate something of a spectacle when she walked in wearing a wallaby skin cloak, carrying an Aboriginal message stick and giving the black power salute before being sworn in. I did wonder how many wallabies were killed to make that cloak she wore, but apparently it's okay by the Greens to skin these animals if you identify as Indigenous. But where this gets interesting is a social media comment she made in 2019, in which she used the term final solution in relation to the way mining companies had destroyed land that is sacred to the Aboriginal people. Now, the phrase final solution is particularly sensitive to the Jewish world for obvious reasons, and even more so in Victoria, which had an influx of Holocaust survivors in the post-war years. But, you might say, well, it wasn't used in reference to anything Jewish, so what's the big deal? That would be fair enough. But do you remember the last time this phrase was used and the furor it caused? Let me refresh your memory. Fraser Anning is a former right-leaning Queensland senator who in 2018 also used the term final solution in a speech. But unlike this time where it passed without even an eyebrow being raised, at the time there was outrage and condemnation from the mainstream and Jewish media. Anning was commenting on immigration and whether Australia should offer non-English speaking migrants welfare when they get here. Again, nothing Jewish related, but it was a very tough stance that I would not endorse. However, that's not the issue here. What he said was this, quote, the final solution to the immigration problem, of course, is a popular vote. At the time, the Liberals, Labor and Greens all got together to pass a censure motion against him in the Senate. The Jewish community also railed against him. And again, I'm not defending his position. But can you see the double standard here? On one hand, a senator from a right-wing political party uses a term that people find offensive and all hell breaks loose. But on the other hand, a senator from a far left party uses the same term, albeit in a different context, but neither were talking about the Holocaust, and there isn't even a whimper. At the AJA, we talk a lot about the hypocrisy of the left, and this is just one more example of it. As I make these comments, the Jewish community has not said a single word about Senator Lydia Thorpe's use of this very unedifying phrase. Not the Executive Council of Australian Jewry, not the Zionist Federation of Australia, not AJAC, and not the Australian Jewish News. The term final solution has no place in modern language, and certainly not to those few survivors still alive, nor to the next generation of their children who grew up in this wonderful country hearing about the horrors of their parents' previous lives. But there has to be a consistency here. If it is right and proper to call out the usage of this phrase by one politician from the right, then it is also appropriate to do the same thing regarding a politician from the left. But as we know, in the world of politics and the media, there is far-reaching double standards that have been applied for many years now. We see it mainly in regards to Israel and the Middle East, but it pervades all areas of modern life. And it is only the AJA which has called out the hypocritical left on this latest occasion, along with a very good letter by our own Michael Bird in the current edition of the Australian Jewish News. You need to know how much of this goes on, and it is one of the reasons why the AJA needed to be formed in the first place. This is Alan Friedman for the Australian Jewish Association.